Welcome to the show. We've got a great show today. We'll be trying out the new grinding jig. And as I mentioned a couple of days ago, I had just about enough left of that machete I cut apart to make one more knife. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a link to it up here. That's the one where I made and tested for the first time my new bevel jig. I did a little bit more work on the blank for this knife after that last show. I wanted to make a small knife that had a practical blade, plenty of belly, and a drop point. And since this is a stainless steel, I'm going to try to do all this work without ruining the factory temper. Now again, I don't have a lot of experience using the jig. In fact, I've really only been using this for a couple of days now. But it's such a straightforward process that I really don't expect it to give me too much trouble. There are a couple of things to keep in mind, of course, as you approach the point of the blade. You have to adjust the angle of the jig a little bit to continue that grind around the point of the blade. And you'll see that here as I go. I just kind of pull away on the handle end of the jig. But you always have to be careful when you're doing this because that point is very fine and that belt will heat it up really fast. And as you'll see here, a couple of times I actually did overheat the point of the knife. And I had to do a little bit of work reshaping that and regrinding it. Now this was a very hard steel which meant that these belts would only remove the material somewhat slowly but it's also quite a thin steel it's a little bit thicker than a sixteenth of an inch might be about 14 gauge steel so if you think of like a typical kitchen knife like a steak knife or something this steel is only about twice the thickness of that so there really wasn't that much material to remove to bring this bevel down to a decent edge so I decided this time to spend a little bit more time on getting a, a decent finish on the blade. As you'll see here, I started out just taping down some sandpaper and trying to work the blade that way. But I found that wrapping sandpaper around a block and then locking the knife into the bench vise really gave me the best advantages for cleaning up the blade. Now, I don't have a lot of experience finishing knives, but one of the tricks I've learned along the way is that as you're working your way up through the grits, if you change the angle that you're sanding at, it's a lot easier to see when you've really removed all of the scratches from the last piece of sandpaper you were using. So I did that a little bit with this knife, but what I found was that there were some deep scratches in the blade that were left by the original belt I was using to put the bevel in on the grinder. And so I just wound up going through tons and tons of sandpaper, and you'll see I use some old belts to try to take those scratches out. And as I mentioned, this is a really hard steel. It's a stainless steel. And I was kind of surprised by how hard the steel was, especially coming out of a machete. I would have expected the manufacturer to use a much more resilient type of steel. But that might explain why some of the reviews of that machete talk about it actually breaking when people are using it. I didn't have that experience, but I certainly had a lot of difficulty getting the deep scratches out of this blade. I wasn't timing it, but I would guess I spent pretty close to two hours and at the end, I still only had it up to a 400 grit. But I was pretty satisfied with the look at that point. So to do the scales, I used a scrap of oak. And I traced the shape of the knife and used the scroll saw to cut out the shape. And once I had that pretty close to how I wanted it, I just split it the long way using the scroll saw again. I will say this may not be the best approach. It gets a little tricky, and I'm really using it in a way that it probably wasn't designed for. But I still haven't invested in a bandsaw, so this is basically what I have to work with. Now this was interesting. When it came time to drill a hole in this material, I think I ruined about six drill bits on this. And to be fair, I was using kind of a mixture. I had some older bits that were probably decent quality, and then some newer bits that were pretty cheap. But I was really surprised how much it took to get through... Again, maybe just a little over sixteenth of an inch of steel. At one point in here, you'll see I even got out a metal file because the drill bits just were not doing their job. But eventually I got through and I got my holes drilled for the scales. 
I used a fast setting epoxy for the glue up. And I've mentioned this before. When they say fast setting, they mean fast setting. You really have to be ready to move quickly with these five minute or six minute epoxies. But of course the advantage is that they set up pretty quickly and usually within an hour or two you can already unclamp the scales and start shaping them. When I cut off the pins I made sure to leave them just a little bit proud of the scales so that I could pin them into place. Especially since in this case the fit was a little bit loose and I wanted to make sure to be able to swell those pins to get a good tight fit. So when it comes to shaping the scales, bring it to the belt sander, do the best I can to get the scales trimmed down to where they match the tang of the knife. And then if there's little tight areas to get into, I'll use the Dremel or sometimes I'll use hand tools or sandpaper. You just kind of use whatever you have that'll actually get into those little spaces. And I've found that if I take my time and I just keep working at it, don't worry about getting it done quickly, I usually get pretty nice results. If I try to rush things, Sometimes I'll wind up scratching the blade, and a couple of times I've even cracked or damaged the scales. So there is basically the finished knife. I'm going to do a little bit more work to clean up the blade, and definitely put a better edge on it. But it's getting pretty late tonight, and I'm satisfied with how it turned out for now. So thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I'm here at least a couple times a week, sometimes more than that. And I'd really love to hear from you, get your feedback on the videos, and maybe get some ideas for projects you'd like to see. Thanks again, and wherever you are, whatever you're doing, have a great day, and we'll see you in the next video.